We should be live in just a second, by the way. Okay. All right. So why, 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 why does it play like that? So it's it's locked at thirty, uh, but they're both locked like solid. There's no <clears throat> there's no real like tearing or anything. Uh huh. Um, but the reason you, it feels quote unquote smooth is because it's got motion blur on it. Motion ah. blur. Yeah, motion blur does a lot too. So even if you have thirty FPS, motion blur makes uh makes it just way smoother because it artificially feels like you're blending the flame uh, the frames together so it feels a lot smoother so even though it's 30 it'll probably feel like 35 yeah no, it, it feels great um, so I'm gonna show off the uh, the options I have I have everything set to high set to ultra with the exception of ambient occlusion I have that turned to high just because I did notice a frame rate drop yep um, and then texture quality is set to, to high. Though I think the highest you can do for lighting quality is high as well. So. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. Yeah, dude, no, the your, the Digital Foundry article this morning, so uh, quite, quite telling, I think. Yeah. I, I assumed that the consoles would just be matching the PC high settings because uh, that's kind of what the you know the the games coming out this year have done but it's not really which is a bit well, surprising you know what i'm surprised is the the thing i noticed with destiny is they said they got it to you know native 1080p and the way they did that was obviously by turning off the connect with the exception of just the voice control you can still do with the connect um so the thing that surprised me was when you told me that the Xbox re Xbox One version is native 900 because the Kinect still turns off when you're playing. No, 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 no. That's so. No, no. It has nothing to do with you being able to turn the Kinect on or off. It's just there's an internal. Uh, it's part of the API where the system actually allocates 10 percent uh, of the power, the CPU power, to the Kinect. So that's regardless of if the Kinect is on or off. And the only way to uh, really switch, like toggle that, is with the software, which is that SDK that Microsoft released. Right, right. And and so the first game that I saw that toggled with was Destiny, and so I figured that was just you know that's the the, the way I could tell the connect was being essentially turned off was I don't know if you've ever had yours hooked up. No. Nope. Um, okay, so the the way it controls your your living room is using the same kind of you know, technology they use just in remote controls. Um, so it's essentially sending a, a, a blast to your your, um, your TV and your direct TV box, or whatever it is you have. Um, it has three sensors in the front of the Kinect that are turned on. But when the Kinect was turning its turning off for Destiny, those three lights went blank. It doesn't do that with any other game on the Xbox. And so that's, I kind of figured that was just the the way the console was showing you that the Kinect was being turned off for the sake of the game. Oh, uh, no. Well, I, I, I would assume that, I mean, because this game is out already. I mean, like, I would I would not be surprised if they use that extra 10%, because, I mean, this is a very different game uh, than Destiny, and this is actually, like, the detail that this is pushing on the screen is just way more than what Destiny is doing. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I would not be surprised if Monolith were like, no, we're, we need like that 10% back. So, I, I, I'm not, I would not be surprised at all. Well, and I, I figured that 10% was coming back for the texture quality. Um, that's why I was kind of surprised about uh, it being 900. To no, me, the we both know it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but yeah, 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 no, but I'm just saying for like sake of understanding, like the, the, the that 10%, the processing power isn't really used for the texture. The texture is more memory bound than anything else. Uh, that CPU power uh, mainly is used for things like AI. Ah. So, yeah, so, which is why I'm not surprised uh, that they're using that extra tank. That they wouldn't be, yeah, because, I mean, the Nemesis system in this game is ridiculous. And especially, like, your man, I mean, you, you go into a stronghold and say one of the dudes, like, alerts the entire stronghold, you have, like, 50 orcs on the screen. Um, are you in the stream right now? Yeah. 
Can you check the audio levels real quick? Just let me know how they sound. Okay. Hold on, one thing. Sure. Yeah, you might want to turn the game down a little. Okay. Ugh, this game is really good. I've played, it's telling me that I've played 18 hours. Jeez, I've played like, combined between the two consoles, I think I've played, um... <laughs> five? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's telling me that I'm 41% through and I've played like 18 hours. Okay, I turned the game audio down. Solid. <laughs> So yeah, I was, uh, I was, I spent the last hour putting together some, um, gameplay and, and cutscene stuff for the next lore video. Uh-huh. And then when I got to s time to s do the voiceover, I forgot, you know, the, um, the, the part of the story where the topic that I'm talking about is at. Yep. And so I had to like email a couple Anyone of my friends who are like big Tolkien nerds like I am. So I'm just kind of waiting to hear back from them. <laughs> Dude, okay. Um, can I just tell you the Celebrimbor like cutscenes are hugely badass. Like they're my favorite ones because they explain to you like the history of Middle Earth, sort of like like the reason why like all this crazy shits going down. What I'm really surprised is how much they're allowed to talk about events that are explained in the Silmarillion. Cuz I didn't see, think they had the rights to that. Or I don't think no, well, I don't think they do cuz I'm as I, as I understand it they only have rights to the Hobbit and, and Lord, the Lord of the Rings. Of the Rings. I bet like I I wonder like I bet you there's just so much, a lot of more information in the appendices of the Lord of the Rings than but I don't, I don't remember them explaining, like, you know, um, certain things that have already been explained in, in my storyline. Like, like, say, you know, Celebrimbor's origins. He's yeah. really only mentioned. He's not really, like, you don't really know who he is if you just read the appendices. We know that he created the Rings of Power, but that's it. We don't know that he's, you know, Feanor's uh, grandson. We don't know that... He was essentially was in Beleriand during the first stage. He survived the fall of Nagorthron, where he was, you know, living at the time. When his father was banished, he de he denounced his father. You know that kind of stuff. You don't you, you don't learn in the appendices. But I'm I'm just kind of surprised at how much they're allowed to actually talk about. I think it's cool, man. It's just like this is, and it's literally it's because of that that like this is straight up my favorite Middle Earth game that I've ever played. Well, no, this is it, the the best Middle Earth game I've ever played, but I, I I'm not far enough in the story to kind of know what they're explaining just yet. Yeah, it's it's pretty sick, dude. Okay. I mean, I'm supposed to be killing a war a war chief. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. That's that's also, that's my thing with this game. I get like so sidetracked. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Dude, okay, I got this. You, once you go into like that newer area, you get like you get abilities just that just add an entirely new layer to the Nemesis system. Yeah. Well, that that newer area and all the abilities you're talking about, that was the demo they showed us at E3. Oh, seriously? Um, yeah. They you know 45 minute long play. A playthrough of the Nern area, and the they essentially let the people in the room decide what the person playing the game was going to do, who they were going to attack, how they were going to attack them, stuff like that. It was really cool. So, like, each demo was different, basically. Yes. Did you go see it a couple times? I would have. Uh, no, because I had, I had uh, too many other things to do during that week. I mean, I had meetings all day. Um, Wednesday. I tried to go back Thursday, but I didn't want to miss The Witcher, so... Oh, good man. <laughs> Dude, okay, I'm not kidding, like, cause, like... God, I mean, the Nemesis system, now that, like, I've, I've actually... You start to, like, understand what exactly... How you can play politics, cause, like, you know those, you know those, uh... The conflict between the captains, where you can, like... They have duels, right? And you can, yeah. like... Right, okay. 
I have a situation right now in my in my uh, like chest board map thing where there's a there's one war chief and he's got two of those bodyguards, right? One of the bodyguards I've already dominated and he's basically my bodyguard. The other bodyguard is not my bodyguard, but he is currently setting up a duel and I happen to control the guy that he's dueling with. So I'm going to try and find that second bodyguard and kill him so that my duel guy will take his place. So both of that war chief's bodyguards will then be mine. Nice. Oh, I'm and going hopefully to... that hopefully one of the guys will get promoted and I he, I will have like a war chief to myself. Nice. That's so it's this... so sick like how much you can do with this. It's god, it's so amazing. I just saw a Karagor. I'm trying to find it so I can mount it up. Apparently you can get a skill, but yeah, you have to do a couple more uh, main missions that you can like just basically counter their like attacks. Yeah. Right now you can't counter them, you can only leap away. Um, but, yeah, dude, yeah, I mean, th this game just gets better and better. Like, the more you learn about the Nemesis system and what it, how you can actually use it, it just gets so good. And if there's if there's one thing, quote-unquote, next-gen about this game, it's that. It's just oh, yeah, the, definitely. the AI. Like, the AI is just really... The way that it's set up is so good. Except for like, I mean, I think I, there's there's been a few situations where I've been sneaking around, and I swear to God, I, some orcs have had me dead to rights, and they just don't see me. Oh yeah, no, no, that happened a little bit ago during my other playthrough just now. So I mean, they're like a little bit dumb in that sense, but the Nemesis system is just so good. Yeah, oh, it's God. it's a nice framework for. Um, what they can do with it as they get, as the technology gets better and they stop, you know, developing these games for consoles that were released eight years ago. Yeah, and honestly, you know what? I, I bet you that's why they had to split up two regions. Sure. Because, I mean, these the, the regions by themselves aren't massive, but they're very, very dense. So I think trying to simulate all of that at one giant like peace, I think that would have just been like way too much. Oh, I just saw you kill this Caragor with your last chance, your last stand thing. Yeah. Ugh, this game is so good. So, okay, you need to explain to me a couple things. Sure. Because I actually don't understand. If anyone has any questions in the chat room too, just, you know, ask them and I'll try to answer them. So, Celebrimbor forged all of the rings except for one of them, right? right? Okay. And, I don't know, you've probably already seen the cutscenes, though, like, where it's, it says that, uh, what's his name, like, Sauron, like, in his fair guise, basically tricked him. Mm hmm So, like, was, where, where did this happen? In Eregion. Where's that? Uh... You know where um, the doorway to Moria is? Uh, yeah. yeah that's, that's oh, right again. Okay, I see yeah. it on my map. Yeah, it's um, in fact, the the doorway to Moria is generally ascribed to be one of Celebrimbor's other greatest, you know, feats. He's the one who inscribed the letters. Or um, oh, is that what you're unlocking with the Ethildine? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't. I actually haven't found any of the Ethel Dean in this game. What? Yeah, no, I, I haven't been looking for it. You should, dude. They get too you busy some killing fun. people. Thanks. <laughs> you will be happy to know, though, that Italian, like, once he gets that dominate power, he's like very, very hesitant about, like, I don't want to, like. Yeah, as he should be. Yeah, and then Celebrimbor's like, you don't have to like them, but you need to understand, like, the greater. Like story at play here or something like that. Every time you speak. Because I remember yesterday you were like, uh, he, a ranger would never, you know, say that was okay. Yeah. And I just remembered when I got that power, and he was like, "Why do we have to use these?" Basically, well, that was one of the things that I took away from the uh, from all the reviews I wrote. A lot of the reviewers, uh, a lot of the, uh, reviews I wrote, reviews I read, a lot of the reviewers mentioned that as well. Which I thought was was cool. I mean, he's no, he's by no means like a great character. 
in terms of, you know, being good. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, he's turned out to be a pretty, pretty good character in terms of, like, just interesting and you kind of want to root for him. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, like, the black and white good versus evil that Tolkien is known for, mm -hmm. he's definitely not it. Crap, there are way too many people around me. Yeah, you should, dude, those are two cats, you should, yeah. You okay. Did you not kill his, you didn't kill his bodyguards, did you? No, I did not. not I just went straight anyway. for because that's how I roll. <laughs> Though, at this point, I am going to just run away. There's no way, I mean, I'm seeing like 20 orcs on your screen, dude. He's not climbing the wall. Why are you not climbing the wall, Talia? Is there something? Crap, I am, I'm, I'm literally thing. just kind of like sitting there. <laughs> you're gonna see it in a second. It, it wasn't pretty. You're you're just kind of. Did you die? No, actually, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, there's the second bodyguard. You just met another bodyguard here on my stream. Yeah, no, I'm I'm piecing out. Yeah, he's getting too far away. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like running right in. <laughs> Abandon! Alright, so let's let's go kill his See I don't know which ones are his bodyguards, that's the thing. No no no, okay, so go into your go into your map, your 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 uh your Sauron's army thing. And find the war chief that you were just after and you'll see two white lines going to captains, those are his bodyguards. Alright, so I'm gonna go kill Goroth. Hopefully he's not still right next to that guy. He is, dude. I, I guarantee you he is. I uh, just came from there. Uh, maybe okay, I should go do something I... else first, then. Maybe I should just go after another war chief. Well, I mean, that's why... I, that's the only reason I suggest killing his bodyguards, because you literally... Like, you have just way less people to deal with. Yeah. Well, no, it makes perfect sense. It's something I should have done. Mr. Bradford, the real-time strategy player, not using strategy in this game. Right? You know, because that's just that's how I Whereas play. Shank, the one who sucks at real-time strategy and just cannot play those games, using strategy in this game. Right. What I is going know. on? Like, I, I don't know. I'm just... Uh, I'm losing it, man. I think it's because... Of you just finally came to terms that Tolkien just absolutely ripped off Monolith's game. Alright, well, I mean, this is where the stream ends. Um, <laughs> have a good night, guys. <laughs> I'm actually a little sad because um, I can't set OBS to, to, to stream at 60 frames per second, but I can set up... Um, no, 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 I'll, I'll look that up. I'm pretty sure you can. Because no, the highest is, uh, is is 30. I, I looked it up earlier before I started the stream. There's no way. Yeah. Um, unless I, I don't I don't know. I may have to get like an add-on or something. Um, nope. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, no, no way, dude. Yeah, you can set the you can set the frame rate right here. He's working with someone. Yeah, dude, you can totally get whatever frame rate you want here. Huh. Yo, Let's figure it out. Hide along, you idiot. Say hello to my friends. Yeah, because I was like, I was remembering. I was like, there, there's, there's definitely a way you can do that. Because that would just be awesome. <laughs> Super professor in chat saying, "Ah, oh, you're leaving right when I get here." I'm not leaving. No, I think he, he heard me because when I was trolling you and you said I'm gonna cut the stream. Now. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. How is this game? He asks. He or she? Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, he's. Uh, it's it's awesome. Definitely it's, worth the money. And I'm just gonna say from somebody who was very vocally against this game. Well, not really against. I was just highly, highly skeptical about this game. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, I got hit like yeah. four guys at the same time. Crap, crap, yeah. crap. Well, crap. actually, I think, I don't know, maybe after a certain point you can get a skill where you, you get headshots that recharges your focus, which is pretty sick. Um, yeah, no, this game, as a, coming from a former skeptic who had 
pretty much none of the information that I was looking for until like a day before the game release. It's really fun. It's the best Middle Earth game I've ever played. Um, it's just, it's really, really good. And the PC version is actually quite competent. Except for like one setting, which I really wish they had options for, which is anti-aliasing, but it's still a very good game. It's not ugly, but it's Seriously? really fun. Oh gosh, there's like five captains around here now. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> You know, you, you start to just try to get some intel, and you run into like five captains. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm seeing you just kind of get like swarmed. I'm in charge. Yeah. Man's time is Remember, over. like, this is kind of like one of those like prison shower scenes no! where like <laughs> nothing. That's good essentially happened. what happened. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm just seeing, like, all the captains doing their intro taunts now. You must be far behind, because I'm already dead on my screen. Yeah. I got, I got the stream I got the stream next to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm like... Yeah, the chat room's with me here, too. So I don't even see the... Like, the only person I see talking is Super Professor in the chat. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah! Doo -doo. Let's see, who let Bane into Middle Earth, by the way? I don't know. But apparently I just, like, promoted a ton of these guys because I died. Yeah, like, your entire second tier Jeez. is gonna get filled up now. Oh my like, gosh. Like, all those guys are just gonna move up, and you're just gonna get newbies coming into the lower ranks. Alright. I love I love when they show you this too, like the 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 after like the post mortem. It's so sick. I saw in Kotaku that apparently somebody cleared out the entire board in one life. To guide us in the land of shadow. I like almost did that with the exception of the war chiefs. reflections of the light of the two trees. That's that's like kind of like saying, hey, I almost had a car except for like the engine and wheels. <laughs> Hey, but if you had everything else, it is technically almost a car. It's also almost a lot of things, Bradford. How are you liking the game, Bradford? Asks Waylerin. Um, as a game, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um, as a lore junkie, uh, I haven't kind of come to that conclusion yet. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as Bradford, except for Lore Junkie swap lore out with graphics, and I'm pretty much agreeing with him. I still, I, I love how much information they've put into the game, though. Like, the appendices in this game are quite informative. Yeah. I mean, like I said, as, as a game, even when I was at E3, that was the thing that was like making me really want to get this game was was be was because of the gameplay. Knowing full well that I didn't quite like the the premise of the game, you know, the whole him being taken over by a wraith. Um, so like Celebrimbor cannot be a wraith, just flat. No, no he, he's a wraith. He's dead. No, no, no. Yeah, but I'm saying like in in like lore or like he can't be one, right? In like pure Tolkienism. Well, no, no, and and that's that's the thing. That's kind of what's got everybody who's like, considers himself a, a Tolkienist or a Tolkien buff. That's what everyone really had the issue with, because he's been dead. I mean, he's 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 gone. There's no more Celebrimbor. Um, his spirit is either in in Valinor. Which, how a black Numenorian can summon his spirit from Valinor is beyond me. And if he's not roaming Valinor, then he is um, locked in the halls of Mandos. Which again, how a black Numenorian can call him from there is beyond me. Because uh, what's a black Numenorian? Uh, that sounds the Black Hand. He's a uh, Numenorian who's evil, kind of thing. See, I, I, I was black Numenorians. Who that guy actually was? Yeah, he's he's a black Numenorian. He looked like an elf. 
No, no, he's he, he's he's a Numenorian. Um, that's the only way they they could explain it. No mere man would have that kind of power that he has. So he has to either a be a black Numenorian or um, a wraith himself. Who knows? So what are what are the black Numenorians? They're just bad Numenorians. Yeah, they're Numenorians who kind of served Sauron. Crap, I Did cannot they... get this Karagor to leave me alone. I don't want to, like, fight it, because I'll die. Go go climb something. They can't reach you if you climb too high. I climb like, three things. I'm dead. He followed me. Like, totally followed me. No, do yeah, see, I just saw you climb this, like, smaller thing. How did he get stronger by the thing killing me? Because Seriously? time passes. Every time you die, time passes, and all the conflicts on the uh, the map get resolved, and the winners always gain power. It's you know, regardless of what huh. your action is, they they will gain power. Whoever the victors. Well, are. the nice thing is, is one of the um, what one of the uh, bodyguards that I was gonna go kill was just killed in a duel. So. Yeah, but, but did that bodyguard get replaced by somebody else? Like, because I'm, I'm saying like. The bodyguard might have died, but did the war chief did did he just replace another one so the war chief still has the same number of bodyguards? Yeah. Yeah, see that's that's <laughs> You gotta start from the bottom now you're here. No. What is this sorceress power to enter their minds? It is not natural. It is Bane got promoted, to dude. Among the servants of our enemy. It is the power to hunt the followers of the Dark Lord. Alright, let's go figure out what I'm actually going to do, instead of just running around aimlessly getting killed by Karagors. I'm sure that will be a lot more interesting to the viewers. You know, it was a duel I wanted to... If, uh, if Isildur's heir was a Karagor, her name, his name would be Karagorn. How long did it take you to come up with that? Honestly, ever since I started this game and I heard the word Karagor, I've always said Karagorn. <laughs> I love that little speed boost that you could unlock. It's it's awesome. It gets me out of so much trouble. I also love that Talion seems to have unlimited sprint. He must be like using the marathon perk or something. There's your Call of Duty reference that you're never gonna hear me say again. This is no ranger. This is Katagorn. You owe him your allegiance. <laughs> Don't think that's how the conversation went. <laughs> have you heard nothing Katagorn has said? The ring must be destroyed. Well, the line is, have you heard nothing Lord Elrond has said? Right, I, I replaced it with Karagorn. Ah. Uh... Alright, so we got... See, I'm gonna ambush this and kill somebody. Hopefully kill two people. So, okay, this this area that you're in is called Udun, and I'm looking at on my map right here. Udun is, like, really tiny. Yeah. Was this all, like, Gondorian crap? Uh, I, I don't know. My, my Mordor lore is somewhat lacking. Uh, Waylaren asks, are you guys picking up Dragon Age? I am absolutely playing it, uh, really for one reason. Um, but I don't know, are you playing it? Are you gonna pick it up? Uh, I will likely pick it up. Um, it's one of the few games at E3 I was really impressed with. Did you see their live stream uh, this past week? No, no. The last thing I saw from Dragon Age was the closed door thing I saw at E3. Oh man, dude, they're, I saw, I watched their live stream um, after like it was recorded or whatever, and the character creation is beyond anything I've ever seen in any game. This character is it's beyond just... any of you. <laughs> it's so good, man. Yeah, and I, I was impressed. I mean, they were they demoed it on a PC. Um, well, the demo that I saw at E3 was on PC as well. Was it the PC build, though, or was it, like, demoing on a PC of the Xbox build or something? That's uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it was on a PC build. Okay. Uh, I can't wait. Especially because, uh... 
I'm, I'm guessing within the next week or so, they're going to start talking about the PC requirements. So, I'm just keenly looking forward to that. Dude, you can grab the... Oh, wait, yeah, I'm on a delay, never mind. Yeah, you probably... <laughs> yeah, I think I've already grabbed it. No, 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 I was going to say, because you had whittled down that guy's health pretty low, so I was going to say grab him and interrogate him for intel. No, no, I, 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 there was too many guys around, so if I'd have grabbed him and tried to interrogate him, I would have been hit by somebody else. All right. Well, there is a guy nearby that looks like I can grab some intel from him, so that's what I'm going to do. Headshot. And then, of course, I killed everybody around with that one shot. Dude, he would survive there's, this, there's a nasty ability you get with the bow once you get into the new area where you aim at them, right, with left trigger, and then you can hit um, A or X, and it'll instantly, like, fly you over to that, per that target, and you can just, like, instantly kill them. Oh, yeah, no, I already have it. Oh, wait, it's an insta-kill. The one I have is a, uh, you stun him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, you can, you uh, you get the stun first, and then you can get the instant kill them. But, dude, I, I couple the stun, like, I, I, I always go for the archers first, and I always stun the archers, then dominate them so they're under my command. And then once I jump down into the middle of a fight, I just activate all the archers, so they're just, like, firing death upon the Uruks. It's pretty sick. I'm not that far. I can't dominate anybody. Dude, Except for if... Rat bag. <laughs> Ratbag is probably the greatest orc I've ever seen. Though, is he an Uruk or is he an orc? I still They're have... all Uruks. I don't know what the, like, how, what is the difference between Uruks and orcs? I just, the Uruks I... are bigger, stronger. Um, but Ratbag looks tiny. Yeah, but he's still an Uruk. He refers to himself as an Uruk as well. Yeah, but see, that's what I don't, I, like, I don't understand. Like, if Uruks are supposed to be bigger and, like, I, I, I have... I, I just don't. I cannot tell the difference between an Uruk and an Orc. Are there That's any Orcs text game, or are they all just Uruks? It seems like they're all just Uruks. So I've never done a uh, an execution thing. I don't know if I'm supposed to like stop the execution. It doesn't matter because whoever, yeah, because they're basically going to be killing these uh, the slaves, and you just need to. Oh no, wait. Never mind. Yeah, so... Hmm. I would... I would kill whoever is... Who has the biggest power rating. I don't know which one that is. Look at your... Look. look at your... Look at your army. Luke Luke has nine. Hura Head Chopper is the guy who's being executed right now. He's got six. Yeah, I would kill the executioner then. Because whoever survives is going <clears> to <throat> get promoted and get increase in power. So you don't want somebody powerful already to become more powerful. See Bradford's strategy. I'm like legitimately shocked that you're sneaking around right now. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I use the stealth pretty pretty often actually. But you all look the same to me. You you just don't strike me as someone who stealths anywhere. I use stealth all the time. Maybe just maybe not as often as you do, but I use it pretty often. Oh damn, that guy is like super affected by ranged. Just yeah, I know. But I'm out of elf shot. Can't you uh just just uh Oh never mind, I was gonna too say too many guys around. If you drain them, you can get back some of your elf shot. Yeah, too many guys around. I'll get hit. <laughs> too many people. Men swine. If I didn't know better, I would say that your ranger I just killed. But you all look the same to me. I love how every single Uruk has, like, a southern, like, London accent. <laughs> are you saying that all southern Londoners are Uruks? Yes. 
and it's up to the aristocracy, those in the north, like in Yorkshire, to take them out. So basically with my logic, Talion is a Yorkshireman. Which makes sense, because isn't he a northern ranger? Yep. Well, he's from the north, I guess. So, so yeah, so that's, that's the other thing I don't understand. Where did the tutorial take place? Because, like, if it took no, place... No, it, it took place on the wall. Uh, what wall? The, uh, the Moronon, the Black Gate. Because he's in exile, so he's guarding the Black Gate, essentially. That's his punishment. Why is he in exile? Uh, that, I don't know. Dang it. So he's guarding the Black Gate and he has a family. Like, why in the hell would you bring your family to guard the Black Gate? Well, he didn't. Uh, if you listen to some of like the loading screen things, um, I kind of like. Well, if you listen to some of those things, you hear that conversation between Eoreth and her her father. Um, she mentions that if he if he's tried and convicted, she'll say that she was with him and be banished just along with him. Oh. So it's essentially, you know, he's not gonna they're not gonna be separated. So lame. His wife was so hot. Yeah. I can't believe she's dead. I can't believe how many times I've died. I do not understand these powers, Wraith. I have no I any I'm not anywhere near but I will use killing a war chief. That, that was the whole in thing I set out to do. I mean, you are you are straight up like just rushing into this stuff, dude. Well, that's how I roll. I'm headstrong. Right, but I'm just like saying that if you, if if you die often enough, like these guys are just gonna get really really powerful. Because every single time you die, it like yeah, shuffles they, or yeah. Well, well, well. Just a good end, thank you. Pudding as kudem pudim buddha. Yep, I'm running. In shadudu uvru murudu. Murudu? Really? Murudu. That's the way you went with that? Japanese, man. None of it makes sense. No, it all makes sense. It's the way you say it that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but isn't that how they would say Mordor? No. <laughs> They'd probably just say Mordor. They would extend the O's to make the R sound. Like, my name isn't Puradofordu, it's Puradofordu. Puradofordu? Yeah, it's not, it's not that. Alright, let's actually kill a captain this time. Rick Rule is asking, what is the Silmarillion about? It's actually about Hillary Swank's character going in. Maybe, maybe you should stop talking now, Shrek. <laughs> and her and Aaron Eckhart need to go restart the center of the Earth. That's what the Silmarillion's about. Yeah, I... No, it's not about... It's, it's the... It, it, Bible of Middle Earth. It's a lot of things. Um, it starts out with the origin story, you know, the Ainu Lindale, the way this, the way the world is created. Um, it goes into who the Valar are, you know, the the people who you know, create the world and their struggles. The reason why it's called the Silmaril, uh, the Silmarillion, is because it follows mainly the story of trying to recover the three Silmaril jewels that, jewels that are stolen and all of the crap that happens as a result of them being stolen. Um, then it goes into the Akalabeth, which is the fall of Numenor, and then it talks to, there's an entire section called Of the Rings of Power, the Third Age, where it kind of goes into more detail on the origin stories. That's why I'm surprised they're allowed to talk so much about it in this game, because most of that information is only found in that section of the Silmarillion. Who owns the right to, like, the rights to Silmarillion? Uh, the Tolkien Estate. Do the Tolkien, does the Tolkien estate just like not like the movies at all? No, because they, they're not the books. Uh, the, the Tolkien estate, Tolkien himself didn't think the book movies could ever, 
books could never become movies. That's why he sold the rights for so cheap, because he didn't think anything would ever happen with them. Um, but the movies are so good. Well, they're good now, but back when he sold the rights in the 60s, they nothing could have ever been what it is now, you know? I mean, yeah, I understand, like, there's, I don't think, I mean, I, there must have been, like, literally animated movies of these books earlier, but, I mean, there's nothing like seeing them, like, in a live-action movie with just, like, unbelievable visual effects that just sell you on, like, the insane vistas of Middle Earth. I mean, like, I'm Well, the only other movie that was ever proposed was one about, uh, from, by the Beatles. And they were going to be themselves, like, characters from the books. Like, I think Ringo was going to be, like, was, was going to be, like, um, like, Sam or something, and John Lennon was going to be Frodo, and Tolkien was like, yeah, we're not having any of that. It just makes me hate the Beatles even more. Oh, my God. That's just, yeah. I don't know. I think... No, I think the, the thing is, is... You gotta, you gotta look at it from this this standpoint. The guy who is the executor of the state, Christopher Tolkien, all these Some. stories and books and stuff that we we are we love today and we see made into these franchises, these were the stories that his father told him at, at bedtime. You know. So, to, but how is that a bad? Like, if anything, like this kind of content would just make me would just take my breath away even more and like well, oh my here, god here's here's the thing and this is the this is the thing that i always kind of lament about this is why i have such an issue with the hobbit movies and stuff like that is because the, the story you see in the hobbit is not the story you read in the book and so if the idea is like these these big franchises are going to make people want to read the books even more you know when they read something in the book it is drastically different than what they've seen on screen which one are they going to prefer which one are they going to want to continue onward with you know like the big the, the barrels on the, on the river scene in the in the movie not like that at all in the book so if someone sees that and then goes and reads the book afterwards they're going to like okay well this is a lot less than what i thought it was and then they're not going to want to read the other books yeah but so you're you're assuming that they won't be able to tell the difference that this book is the source material like obviously the movie has to embellish it to make it entertaining well here here's the thing though i mean we t we we talk about this a lot. There's two. There's a ton of people out there that will not make that difference. That are not going to be as informed as other people. I mean, we're we're blessed. You know, we're we're smart guys. A lot of the people who follow us and stuff like that on, on Twitter and on Facebook and stuff like that are smart as well, and they get that that instance. But it's the same. It's the same argument that that you know that people use when it comes to like you know why would someone buy a console as opposed to buying a, a gaming PC that's better well because the misinformed know consoles they don't know that it's just as cheap if not cheaper to get a gaming PC nowadays and so the same same thing kind of thing can be, can be applied here if someone's reading the book but they watch the movie first they're gonna see things and hear things that happen in the, in the, in the movies that aren't even mentioned in the book and then nine out of ten people will probably put down the book like okay this is awful in comparison to the movie whereas we're the one person who would go and try to find that other material well then you have to ask is, are those the type of people that Tolkien would even want reading his works anyway maybe not but that's why you have the, the issue between the Tolkien estate and Middle Earth Enterprises. What's it like to know you know, to them, they see it as, you know, we say it all the time, they see it as the bastardization of the books. The other thing is, is, is you, could, you could make a great adaptation. I'm going to pause the game real quick, and I'm going to explain this real quick. You could make a great ad adaptation that still has the feel and the spirit of the books. The original Lord of the Rings trilogy, those movies... They made drastic changes to the story. I mean, Fadamir is one of the greatest characters in the books, but he is nothing like the Fadamir you, you see in the movies. Um, but the you, no one could ever deny that these are Lord of the Rings movies, because they feel a lot like the books. The Hobbit is, is totally different. They don't feel anything like the Hobbit movies. It, in fact, the, the, the title character seems like a secondary character in these movies. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, but that's 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 the difference between a book and a film is that on a book you can 
you can get away with like having all those characters and not really talking about them or to them but on a movie like they're on they're gonna be on screen no matter what you do if you if they have lines or not yeah you know so like that that's just the challenge of the that's also the challenge and differences in the medium that you're portraying it but that's why I don't think that it's it's realistic at all to expect any adaptation of any work translating perfectly from one medium to well, another. Well, and, and I I agree. You're never going to have a one-to-one -one translation from the from the uh, the books to the movies, just because well, it, 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 it can't be done. I'm even saying like a movie oh, to crap. a a video game to a movie, like any medium to medium, like no, you're not gonna have that a perfectly smooth one to one sort of com uh, comparison. I don't know why I'm even playing anymore because I just keep getting killed. Maybe you shouldn't do the these main missions and like you should just start doing like the side missions or something. As long as we bear this curse and are bound together, we will bring ruin. Oh my gosh, I'm playing. I, I think it's because I'm actually talking instead of just focusing on the game. You're straight up surrounded by like ghouls and everything. Yeah, no, I, I'm locked guys. We must be careful, but in trying to. The nice thing is, is the orc that I, captain that I was going for ended up getting servants. killed in that duel. So that's good. What was that? I just ended up getting killed with him. <laughs> But see, here's my argument. As somebody who hasn't read the books, I have great respect for the books because they are the, they are the reason why we have all this stuff today. But if anything, I think this kind of material, you know, the movies, all the games that I've played of Middle Earth, they have just made me love the world even more. Like, okay, sure, they might not be exactly like the books, but the fact that they take place in the same universe and they, they seem very, very deep and they have that, like, very, very convincing, immersive feel to every single one of them, the movies and the books, that, like, make me say, hey, I want to be there, That's that just makes me love Middle-Earth even more. Well, and and I I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. But again, the, the, the way the Tolkien estate views it is drastically different than us. I think um, that's, I mean, I, 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 I honestly, I hate saying this, I honestly think that they're going to get a lot better with that once Christopher Tolkien dies. <laughs> no, I was just about to say, because, like, I, how much of that is just pride? Just out-and-out out pride saying, no, like, we're not going to do, we're not going to let anybody else touch this stuff. Like, that's, that's just, that's so backwards to me, man. Like, it's such, well, it's such backwards thinking. Like, I understand that this is like... I, I think it's, I think it's maintaining the purity of the original story. That's, that's the thing. But see, here's the thing. What, even, so even if somebody makes a film about the Silmarillion, it's not like the book itself is just going to cease to exist automatically. No, but, I mean, ask yourself this. Which would you rather do? Would you rather go read the book or would you rather watch the movie? I'd rather watch a movie because okay. I see so, that so okay, that's proving my argument though. They would rather you go read the book because that's the purest form of the story. Well, if the movie's out there, what's the point in reading the book? Because because it's not like that book is going to stop existing because there's a movie now. No, but people will stop reading it because there is a movie. That's 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 the that's the argument. No, I, I don't think people will stop reading it. I think there's always going to be people reading it. There's always going to be people watching movies. Whether what what the percentage split between that is, who knows? Frankly, I don't really care because the book is always going to exist, and the, it's not like the movie just because of movies. I mean, like I respect the book because without the book, this stuff wouldn't exist. So, the, even if I'll never read The Silmarillion, I do respect for it's respected for what it is, it's just done to the universe. The fact that all this stuff exists because well, of... Well, here's, here's the other thing. I mean, you've got... You've got people out there who think that other, you know, that don't even know that there is a book. Okay? Like, I don't know how many times I've had to explain that the Horcruxes in Harry Potter are basically rip-offs of the One Ring. But people honestly think the Horcruxes are what inspired the One Ring in the movies. Okay? So, I think that's the fear. Just complete mis... In, mis 
information because no one re will really take the time to go out there and look for it. I think there's definitely something to be said about misinformation, but I think the bigger point to this is as long as people love Middle Earth and know that this universe exists, honestly, I'm okay if they don't, if they never read the books because the fact that they still love the universe, that in itself is just like, okay, fine. They love the universe because some guy wrote about it and created it and now it's spawned this huge thing so who cares if they don't know about the books who cares if they don't read the books the fact that they love all of this stuff i think that should be enough because like you can you can you can argue i think successfully that without the movies the popularity of middle earth would not have exploded as it has oh no you, you can't argue that because next to the bible is the second most read book of the 20th century the movies didn't come out to the 21st Right, right, So, right, I mean, the popularity I'm, was there. I'm, well, yeah, but I'm talking about, like, modern, like, the modern generation. You know, I'm not talking about the, the people... No, 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 you're, you're right. The modern generation probably wouldn't have any clue who this guy is. And, and, again, I'm not arguing saying that the movie shouldn't exist, but what I'm saying is, is that there are certain parts of this, this legendarium that I don't think should ever be made into movies, and one of them is the Silmarillion, because there are certain things in there that you just cannot translate to a Hollywood screen without maintaining the purity of the story. Like, um, there's a fight that happens between an Elven King and Sauron, but it's not it's not fought with, like, swords and crap. It's fought through songs of power. Well, are, is a Hollywood director really going to spend the money... Seriously, how many captains are going to show up here? Yeah, you're getting kind of. This is a this is a good opportunity to run away. I'm tired of running. I was actually doing pretty good. I was killing everybody else around this guy. Pretty well. And then, yeah, thank you. And then all of these freaking captains had to show up. But see, Bradford, it, it's it's what I'm understanding from you is that like you're it it sounds like to you there's like. You only like you. You don't want. You don't think that Hollywood can portray the purity of the books, right? And right. I would. I would agree to, with you up to a point, because that argument, whether you mean it or not, implies that Hollywood, that film, is the only medium. I think something like that. I mean, look at modern video games, dude. Look how much like stuff that they can portray. And I mean, who's to say that something like that couldn't be in a game? You know, it's, it's not like the entire Silmarillion needs to be adapted into a one single film. No, like, but something like that, that's that's a huge part of the story. And something like that just couldn't be portrayed on screen like that. You're right, I think a video game could actually portray it pretty well. Right, Dang it. like, what's what's the, that, see, that's, that's, what, I, like, that's what I really don't like about the whole Tolkien estate just kind of like clinging on to everything and just they... It's just, it, it seems like so much pride, and it's just like, they don't want, they don't want to let a new generation of fans, genuine fans, regardless These if they've read the book. So well, here, here's, here's the thing, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a, not wanting a new generation of fans to do it, or to, to know about this, but it's, again, it's maintaining the purity of the story. But you something is, some, no, you can, here, something is lost. In, in not being able to translate it, the written word the way Tolkien himself wrote it to screen, okay? If Tolkien, I, I guarantee you, if Tolkien were to see the game that we're playing right now, he would probably be appalled at, at what's going on. Because this is something that would never take place in his stories. But okay? see, here's the thing. I don't think that purity will ever be lost because the source material will always exist. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, you're, you're right. The purity itself wouldn't be lost because someone can go pick up the book. But where is the willingness to pick up the book when I can just go watch the movie instead or play the game? But my point, again, my point is, why should that matter? As long as somebody it loves it, it should. It, it should because, and, and you're talking to somebody whose first experience with this entire thing was through the movies, not through the books. Right. Okay. I, I became a fan of the books because of the movies. So my first, my first, you know, foray into Middle Earth was through the eyes of Peter Jackson. That's why, you know, I love those movies for, for that. But I became a bigger fan of the books because of, of the story that, that's lost in the movies. I mean, yeah, you've got the destruction of the ring, but you have moments that happen in the books that aren't re recapitulated in the movies that are so great. And you probably, like, okay, 
I'm sorry? You're kind of proving my point because I don't know how I'm proving your point, but okay. Well, because okay, so you you didn't re you had your first experience with Middle Earth was the films, right? Then what did you do? You were like, oh my god, this is so good, I want to know more, and then you went and picked up the book. What's to say that people won't do that? But I'm not saying people won't do that, but again, I'm I'm the minority there. Okay? How do you know you're the minority though? Shank, have you gone and picked up the books before? I actually have the books, dude. But have you picked them up and actually read them? I've read some of them. Uh, how much have you read it? Uh, I got to the part in the Fellowship where they were still in the Shire. Okay, so you've read like maybe the first chapter. <laughs> no, see, and that's that's why I stopped. Honestly, it was because like I they were it was just on and on and on about they were just in the Shire, and I was like, okay, I can't I can't deal with this. Okay. We're talking about bread. So I guarantee you, if we go poll about five or six more people. I will be the one person who got beyond all of that. Okay. Oh sure, but I, I, I'm just saying, like, there, there's still going to be those there, people. You're who right. Want you're the right. Book. There are still people who are going to want the book, but, but I think the fear again is that they will be the minority and that the, the greater story will be lost because where are people 20 years from now going to be getting their information about Lord of the Rings? It may not be the book. It may be a movie. Well, okay stuff in the movie is not the same as what's in the book so which which are we going to then hold to be the true story are we going to hold it's going to be the books dude no 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 that's no, no, not no. even an argument it's always going to be the you books, and me dude. that's not that's not an argument but for someone 20 years from now who only knows the 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 the, 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 the ip through whatever movies and games come out from, from now but that's a misstep in logic, dude. It doesn't. You're right. It is a misstep logic. in logic. But no, no, again, we're dealing with with a lot of people who are already not thinking logically to begin no, no, with. No, 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 no. Here's here's the, here's the argument. Even if that individual has only seen the movies, and even if he thinks that right that this is the definitive version of the story, regardless of what he believes, it's still wrong because the actual absolute truth is that the book books will always be the purest form regardless of what people think okay that, that's what so, i'm trying to that's what i'm trying to say absolute facts of, like the absolute facts are regardless of people's perception of the truth the actual truth is that the books will always be the b like standard and that's what i think people forget is that they are afraid that the films are going to be viewed as the quote-unquote truth but that's actually false because the actual absolute truth will always lie with the written books and that that will never change it's like it's like saying you know like okay so because somebody is colorblind to them the sky is always going to be like purple even though I mean but the actual fact of the matter is even though they believe that the sky is purple, the actual fact is that the sky is blue, regardless of what they think. And that's the same thing in this case. Even if people 20 years from now are like, oh my god, those movies, you know, from 20, 30 years ago, that was Middle Earth. That was like the best Middle Earth I've ever seen. And even if that's the way that they perceive Middle Earth, guess what? They're still wrong. The actual fact of the matter is the books are always going to be the truth. And that is that is that is absolute. That will never change. That's unyielding. And I, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. What I'm saying is the perception will be out there that it will be... That, that, it, it won't, it doesn't, uh, again, the absolute, that, that's not... The perception is irrelevant. That's what I'm trying to say. But, because no, 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 no. It is relevant because... It, because, you know, if... See, I can't even talk. I'm getting so worked up right now. <laughs> it is relevant because so perception. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't had to defend this in a long time, so I'm just getting really excited. Uh, no, 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 I'm saying you're still alive. Like you're. you're yeah, no, I, I haven't died in like five minutes. It's, it's been kind of <laughs> nice. Um, the perception does matter because the way that things are perceived are oftentimes thought to be the way that they, the, the way that they happen. Okay. Right. But it, it's not the actual truth. You're that's right. It's not. Saying. But the, so the why why should it matter? That's what it that's should matter point. because it shouldn't because the truth is out there and it's unyielding and will never change. That's what I'm trying to say. Nobody can change. But the why truth. contribute to the perception being wrong in putting out a a version of the story that is lesser than what's already out there? What do you mean? Okay, going back to my reference in the Silmarillion. There's that entire, the part that I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the story of the Elven King fighting Sauron, not using weapons, but using songs of power. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is such a huge 
part part of that particular part of the story, but it is also so intrinsically Tolkien, you know, that words themselves have more power in some instances than the, you know, weapons forged by hand. Okay. Uh-huh. Again, what Hollywood director is going to go out there and have the battle between these two great, great figures in the story be resolved by one of them singing and one of them playing a harp? Okay. Probably none, but like, so you're exactly. they're, they're adding to that perception, right? But, okay, so so then how are they going to portray that battle? Because they can't take the battle out of out of whatever they're going to, you know, create out of this. Because it's a huge part of the story. It's a pivotal part of the story. Yeah. So they're going to create a battle scene where, like, you know, Sauron may fling, like, fireballs and Fingolfin knocks him away with the... It's not Fingolfin, it's, it's Finrod Felagon. Knocks him away with a sword and then, you know, starts... They have this big hack and slash battle. Maybe one of them gets killed by by a a, a sword, okay? Totally different than what takes place in the book. Totally different, you know, feel. Totally different meaning behind how the battle is is resolved. They may have the victor be the correct person, but how they got to that battle, you lose the purity and the and just the intrinsic greatness of what Tolkien wrote there. And let me ask you a question then. Does that description, what you just said, does that in any way change what has already been written down? What is already no? It it doesn't change what's been written down. So there, you are. The truth is, dude. The actual okay, truth doesn't the, change. The truth doesn't change. Again, I'm talking about why would you then aid the perception it of it doesn't being affect wrong. the truth? It it's it because it doesn't affect. The, it's it cannot okay. affect the actual. But truth. if 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 then we're going to create a, a version that is quote unquote lesser than the lesser than the truth, why even create? Why, why even have it out there? Why not just create it the way it's written and have the truth be on everything? Well. Because the truth already exists, you can already get. Okay, so then why do we need a movie? To, why, why do we need a movie depicting it? Why do we need a video game depicting that battle? Because why not? It's fun. Okay, so if we're gonna have it, why not? Why not do it word for word for the book? You can. You, no one's saying you can't. I, I'm, what I'm saying, no one will. They'll change it. No, so why? No one will. Okay, I wouldn't. That's true, but I don't have Hollywood power. So. Uh, Again, no one's going to spend millions of dollars on a movie that's going to have two of the chief, you know, well, you're people in there singing. That, I, I'm assuming that. I, I don't know. It, 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 that may not be true. Somewhere down the road, we, when when the, the rights go into public domain, there may be a movie, and who knows, the director may be a Tolkienist like myself. They right, have it word for word. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, regardless of how many contributions to misperception or like interpretation there is, it will never actually change what has already been written down and just permanently fixed fixed as this is absolute like it, that will never change no matter how many adaptations are there it's, I, it's, I, I think it, going back to the original you know the original statement though I think that the Tolkien estates worry is is that though is having the perception be drastically different than what it actually is the perception may be different but what Tolkien wrote down will never be changed it will never be unmade it, can, it can't be and I think that's well. I mean, what, you could, you know, do I like think that's what the Roman forgetting. Catholic Church did back in the day and just burn things. Yeah, but that don't even get me started on that. <laughs> but and I'm a the, Christian saying that. <laughs> but like that's that's the thing. Like I think that I think their fear is unfounded. That's all I'm saying. I think their fear is a little. And bit I I, I don't I don't agree. I think their fear is very founded because I I'm I already have to ward off questions that are that are born off of the perception of the movies being the end all be all. So. Yeah, I but mean, then, if if you had one you tenth, no, no, and and then, and then I set them right, but I mean, it, it, it's still out there. I mean, and so since it's already out there, why contribute to it? I think that's that's the whole thing. Again, <clears throat> these are stories that that Christopher Tolkien heard on his bedside by his father, that he helped kind of cultivate and create throughout his father's lifetime. I mean, all the maps and stuff you're looking at, those were drawn by Christopher Tolkien. Um, got very neat handwriting yeah calligraphy i think technically it's calligraphy so it's just that whole idea of these stories that he's grown up with that he's loved his entire life being changed in his mind not for the better being worsened by having the the purity of of that story be be altered and have that be what's being mass consumed right now and but i I think at at us to a certain degree i think he's forgetting that even if the mass portrayals are different and altered, like, 
he's, his dad's work actually doesn't change. Like, I think that's what he's forgetting about a little. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think he's forgetting about it. I think he just kind of holds the same belief that this story of that magnitude can't truly be told. And if you get down to, like, you know, the nitty-gritty, it truly wasn't told in the movies. I mean, yeah, the, the main story, the quest for the One Ring was was told, but then you had events like the Great New Catastrophe and the Battle of Pelennor Fields and stuff like that. Completely omitted from the movie. You had people like Tom Bombadil not even in there. <coughs> and so the magnitude just wasn't 100% there. And I think that's kind of what he's still hung up on. I'm losing my voice talking. You're still alive though, which is shocking. It's because I haven't tried to kill anybody in like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm just kind of running around. <laughs> what time is it? Crap, I, I need to go eat dinner. <laughs> What's the time? <laughs> it's 7 o'clock. Oh, so it's nine o'clock. Oh yeah, it is. Streaming for two hours. I uh, yeah. I I woke up at like eleven thirty today. I hate you. I was at work already. Uh, so what's that? It's nine thirty your time. Yeah, yeah I, I was at work at nine. There you go. I've had a busy day, dude. Leave me alone. What did you do? I okay. So I woke up. I made some coffee. Um, and I killed orcs. So you had a, a busy day. Uh, yeah, dude. I've been literally like I, I must have ran like at least ten or twenty miles just like running around Nern. Not not the Elder Scrolls Nern, but the true Nern, right? Or, or I don't know how do you pronounce it? Is it Nern or Nurn? No, it, it's N U R N, right? N U R N. Okay. No, no, yeah, no. But that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you pronounce N U R N? Is it Nern or Nurn? Yeah. I mean, Nurn. If you want to get technical, but that's really hard to pronounce, so I just say Nern. Because it's the Sea of Nernin or Nernin or something. I don't know. The giant inland sea. I wanna, yeah. See, that's cool though, because like I, I think there's like so much that can be done to like let loose the imaginations of us. And I'm saying us because we are basically a new generation reading and like learning about Tolkien and all this stuff. Like. There's that an entire eastern side of portion of the map that just not even I don't know I I don't know if it's talked about. You said that Aragorn just mentions the stars are weird. Yeah. But like, I how I really want to like explore that place like in a game like and you we can today because it's the technology well, there. Why not do? It? And I I don't I, I don't mind you know new stories being told. I don't think Tolkien himself would mind new stories being told because essentially. Isn't I'm sorry? This is a new story, it's uh, yeah. to a degree, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I think the danger comes in when you start saying that it, it f totally fits with the canon, and it, it would totally be something that you can see right alongside what's already written. That's kind of what Monolith did. That's what put me off from the get-go. It wasn't until E3 and I saw the, the gameplay demo that I was really into this game. But Dead, I think that's, that's where it gets dangerous. When you start saying it's... You know, it would totally fit. No, the entire premise of the story is flawed from a lore standpoint to begin it's, with. So, what, what's 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 hysterical is that like the two or three days before this game launched, I saw like at least three or four interviews, and every single interview was somebody from Monolith saying we love Tolkien, we're paying respects to the lore, and we want to make it as accurate or something. Well, like, there are some some great subtle nods. Well, yeah, but like. It sounded like this, this. They made this whole game like purely 100% like with respect to all the stuff that he talked about. And I was like, in my mind, I was just listening to your voice saying like, "Yeah, but you have a elf that was brought back as a wraith, which is like actually not even possible with what happened." Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was saying which, during that and entire there first was, cutscene. And, yeah, and they were basically like saying that this is there. We're huge Tolkien fans. Like we're trying to pay respects to Tolkien. I'm like, no, but well, I, I don't deny that. I don't doubt that. Um, they're just not as big a fan as I am. <laughs> I just don't understand. It's, the way that they made it sound was that, like, we are being 100% accurate, and it's like, not really. No, no, and and honestly, Tolkien wasn't even 100% accurate with this stuff. That's why you have inconsistencies with what people consider to be true canon within his stories. Not everyone considers the Silmarillion to be 100% canonical, because it was published after Tolkien's lifetime. What are the Silmarils? You said they're jewels. Yeah, give me a second. So, they're the three jewels that Feanor created that capture the light of the two trees of Val uh, Valinor, the most pure form of light. 
Um, the two trees were destroyed by Melkor, so the only light that was left of the two trees were in the Silmarils. Well, Melkor also stole those. Were the Silmaril were they were the Silmarils in the trees? No, no. But he captured the light of the trees in the Silmarils. Okay, so the Silmarils were like a vessel. Yeah, they were kind of like a a tribute to it. Oh, okay. Uh, but once the trees were destroyed, the only remnant of the light left was in the Silmarils. That's, so they were going to break the Silmarils to re uh, to to basically bring the tree back, bring the trees uh. back. Fanor wasn't going to do that because of the greatest crafts you know of his hand. He's not going to ever make their like again. Not realizing that you know they were already stolen and his father was killed by Melkor and all that jazz. And he in essentially incites a revolt, launches a full-scale war. And uh, that's how elves. That's how the Noldorin came to Middle Earth. Noldorin. Yeah. Uh, Celebrimbor is one of the Noldorin. Uh, Galadriel is part Noldorin, part Telerin. Uh, no, excuse me, she's part Fanyarin. That's how she has her golden hair. Because the Noldor typically had like black races hair. Of elves. Yeah, these are kindreds. We talked about this in one of the White Council episodes, dude. I don't remember stuff. Obviously. Alright, what am I going to do? Am I going to kill somebody? I think I'm going to kill somebody. Um, <coughs> Elrond is an old door. Technically, if you want to get real technical, uh, Aragorn has an in blood as well, because he's technically a descendant of, of the house of Elrond, or Elros, in, on his line. Because he is... so, Because he's, cause he's, like, actually related to Arwen. Yeah, t like, however distantly he's he's related, yes. Gross. Yeah, totally. Uh, Rick Rule says, great conversation, dudes, you should stream more often. I'll we'll try to make this more of a regular thing. All, all, all this stream and this conversation is, is just an actual, like, vocalization of, and a representation of Twitter conversations. Yeah, it's, it's just a lot easier to do this than in 140 characters. Yeah. Because Bradford and I have debates on Twitter, like, all the time. There's, um, I would move. I'm trying oh, to get this guy's intel. You're actually on a, you're like 30 seconds ahead, so it doesn't matter. There's a guy with some intel, and I want it. No, okay, so this is what you do. You climb, uh, actually, I don't even know if you've done this already, but I would climb on top of the structure. Use okay, your I, I got it now. Okay. Because you can use your bow to attract and, like, distract the enemies. I don't know. Do you have that yet? Uh, sort. Of, well, I have a bow. Yeah. So if you draw your bow, right? If you just aim with it using your left trigger, you can hit Y, and wherever you're looking, it'll it'll attract the enemy to that location. Okay. But I can't remember if it, that's like something you need to unlock, or if it's just like something that you have. I think you have to unlock it because I've done that a couple times and, and not ever. Okay. Some more intel. Let's go do that. Gather as much as I can before I kill this guy. I sh li literally, I should probably go eat though. My wife yeah. and daughter will be home soon. <laughs> so I, I'm probably gonna go. What's the time? It's nine. I really want some za. Seriously, Maybe you'll you're gonna call it za. I mean, what? You seriously gonna call it za? Yeah, dude. Okay. It's one less syllable. In fact, it halves the number of syllables. All right. Well, thanks for. Joining the stream, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go let Shank get his saw. Uh... I really, if anything, this game has made me want to go watch the movie. <laughs> like, that's hey, so... maybe you should like go read the books. You own them. Nah, the books. Nah, nothing, you know what nothing. you could do? You know the audiobook that I sent you? Like, what? Like two years ago? You could just go mm -hmm. listen to that. Yeah, but I mean, let's be honest. They're they're not as truthful as the films. So yeah, shut up. <laughs> All right. Uh, whoa, uh, hold on a second. While what? I have you here, somebody yeah. just tweeted me. Uh, Witcher Three: Wild Hunt having serious development issues. Oh, uh, send me the link, because I I can reach out to their PR and figure out, see if I can figure out what's going on. They've got two PR people. They've got an actual in-house PR and they've got Evolve. I think I'm on both of their lists. 
I kind of don't believe any of what I'm reading here right Who's now. Who's it from? Uh, some one of my followers tweeted. Me. No, 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 I mean the article. Oh, uh, it's it's News 360, but it's talking about something that happened on Gaff. Yeah, I don't really put a ton of stock in the Gaff. I don't really. I mean, I don't really trust this because CD Projekt Red kind of is very transparent. Yeah, let me, let me, I'm gonna email this to you. Sure. Uh, mail link. Let's see if I can kill this guy real quick. Well, I hope you're right. Hey! Back for more, hey? You stupid piece of shrug. I don't know what that is. I got hit on the orcish lingo. What have you lot like the beacon? Yeah, I'm running. Whee! <laughs> I I would I really would love personally to see obviously like not all the Silmarillion but like important stories from there like uh, made as films like they could take like battles or something and the stories surrounding the battles and like like tr the only thing I think could ever really be made in the Silmarillion would be the downfall of Numenor that would be so epic can you imagine how sick that would look no, it, it would be awesome, and it's the only story that could truly be told on a Hollywood screen. Um, that, that, I mean, the downside is there'd be very little elves, because, I mean, let's just face it, it's the downfall of men. Um, but, I mean, you have betrayal, you have, es you have like, you know, espionage type stuff going on, you have harrowing escapes, um, massive loss of life, massive battles going on. Who it's, exactly it's great. Like, was was Sauron an elf or was like what what? No, he's a Maya. Oh, okay, okay. He's okay. of the same order of of uh, the Balrogs and uh, Gandalf. Gandalf and stuff. So when he appears in his fair guise, can he choose whatever he wants to look like? Yeah, he yeah you know, they they wear bodies like we wear clothes. Uh, after the downfall of Numenor, he can no longer take that fair guise. Yeah, because, like, okay, so his, his Anatar, was was that, like, an elf, or, like, what what was he? He appeared as an elf, yeah. Okay. Anatar, the giver of gifts, hence his name, Anatar. Oh, that means giver of gifts? Yeah. <clears throat> and that's how he looked in Numenor? Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> so he basically just Game of Thrones Numenor. Uh, yeah, actually. I got orders to get a pilot. How do you think J.R.R. Martin came up with the idea, dude? Well, actually, he obviously Tolkien is one of his inspirations. Oh, he cites like the War of Roses and other historical battles. Oh yeah, no, no, uh, definitely backs up that happened in actual human history. But I can, I can almost guarantee that had a huge influence. Oh no, dude! I mean, it, it obviously did. Like, Sauron was the Roose Bolton of the Red Wedding in Numenor, essentially. <laughs> Like, he went there willingly, he, like, was a prisoner for three years, and then worked his way into the king's graces to become his, like, chief counselor, set up, like, devil worship, sacrificed people, Technically, went down with the ship. Technically, never a prisoner, though. That, that's, like, that's the, I think that's the difference. That's yeah, that's the, the that, that's true, that is the difference, but, I mean, I, I can totally picture, like, Sauron when he, like, stabbed, if he were to ever, like, stab the king there, be like, you know, Melkor sends his regards and just stabs him. He would look like he. He would be basically Roose Bolton in, in that instance. Yeah, ten, can you? <laughs> one for one. They have, if they picture. ever, ever, ever make this into a movie, they have to get the actor that played Roose to be Anna. No, they have to get someone who's like actually good looking, and I, I'm not gay or anything, but Roose is not that. No, 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 no! I'm saying like the the whole movie, right? The whole movie, they have like the regular actor, like, a good, like and then no, just no. One what they scene. should do is just splice in that scene, so it's like not even the <laughs> actors in the movie. It's just like you know, and then you know, have like some really bad Asian dub over his mouth. So instead of the Lannisters send their regards, Belcor sends his regards, but it doesn't fit with his lips. Oh my God! They just <laughs> cut. From, they cut from this like idyllic kingdom to like the twins. <laughs> Okay, we need to get off of this, go make this happen, and make millions of dollars. <laughs> you just see, like, Cat Stark's arm, <laughs> and that's it. 
And that's like it, and it just switches back to the movie again. Oh my god. Oh, and, and then the best thing to do is they could totally do like what they did in The Fellowship of the Ring, and you know, when Frodo gets stabbed by the uh, by the spear in the in the the chamber of Mazarbul. Mm-hmm. So watch closely when he gets stabbed and then he gets up, the the wound is on the opposite shoulder that he gets stabbed on. Is it really? <laughs> yes. And so they when they, they show this, they should have like, you know, he gets stabbed in the chest in the Game of Thrones sequence. But then they should like have a scar on his shoulder where he got stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go watch that part of the movie and you'll never unsee it. No, I, I'm, I'm gonna look for that now. How, yeah. how did he, how did he escape Numenor? Did he just get kicked out? Well, no, his his he, he is he went down with Numenor when it was sucked into the sea. His mm-hmm. spirit, obviously, he, he's immortal. He's not gonna die, so his yeah. spirit leaves. But because of the power of, of the destruction, he's no longer able to take that fair, fair seeming garb. He loses uh, uh, that part of his spirit. So when he's in Dol Guldur, is that like, when is that? Is that after? Oh no, because that's after, that's after, that's he, after like, the Battle of the, the Last Alliance, which is yeah, after yeah. the d- downfall of Numenor. How long is, is, is the Last Alliance like thing after Numenor? Uh, like half an age. So, so. probably, uh, let's see. It would have been within Isildur and uh, Elendil's lifetime because they were exiles of Numenor. Um, gosh, there's there's timelines and stuff. I could just look this up. Yeah, you should, Bradford. People watching this um, are like totally probably wondering why I'm just kind of standing on this tower. <laughs> Woot, I got tons of answers back on my question. That that question is what is the topic of the next uh What question? I don't want to spoil the, the episode. Oh, you got email responses back. Oh, yeah. okay. I was I was like wicked confused. I thought you were talking about something in the chat. No, no. Okay, yeah, no, not L O T R Wiki, because that place is awful. Okay. <clears throat> Eldarion. Okay, no, 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 no. Downfall of Numenor. Downfall of Numenor. Downfall of Numenor happens in the year 3319. Of the, the last first alliance eight. of men of men and elves. The the battle battle of Dagorlad, the siege of Barad-dûr, takes place in 3434. So almost a hundred years later. Wow, so really not that much time between Numenor and, like, and in the fact, whole... the defeat of Sauron is not even is, is another ten years later, because they besiege uh, Barad-dûr for ten years, essentially. Almost ten years. Yeah, no, exactly ten years. Wait, 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 wait. so say that again? So the last alliance marches from, Ila- from Imladris, the, uh, the R- Rivendell. They, the battle that takes place in the siege of Barad-dûr... Is that, takes is that place in 3434. What we see is when Sauron comes out to break the siege in 3441. Oh, so they okay. So everybody like marched on uh, Barador. Yeah. And they just lay siege there. Yes. And then he breaks where, the where siege. They, uh, where did they siege? Was it in Udun or like? Well, I mean the, the surrounding area, the the plains of Gorgoroth and stuff like that. Oh, oh shit! They already they got that far in. Yeah. So they, they lay siege to Barad-dûr. Uh, Anarion dies in 3440, which is the brother of Isildur. Um, and then 3441, Gil-galad and Elendil are killed, and Sauron is defeated. And that's the last year of the Second Age. The next, you know, what happens after that is in the Third Age, which is the age that Lord of the Rings takes place in. Another three, 2,800 years later. So they, they just lay siege for like 10 years or whatever, or yeah. however long it was? Yeah. Well, I mean, look at look, look at it this way: they're men, so ten years is a long time for them. Um, I think no, Fingolfin. I'm looking at it. Fingolfin laid siege to uh, Thangorodrim for five hundred years. What? Yeah. So that's another thing in the Silmarillion that you just cannot depict on TV. How do you depict five hundred years passing, and all these guys have done is laid siege to this one thing? That would be one hell of a movie. Just it would it would literally lay shame to Ben Hur's length. 
Yeah, so another instance of how the Silmarillion probably cannot be done a one-for-one -one, you know, depiction. So, all right, well, I'm going to get off here because I, I really got to eat food. I'm really hungry. All right. See you later, dudes. Take care, guys. Bye.